Ambassador Christian College now presents the Key Slough Commentary with Dr. Key Slough. Prayer today because so many times even Christians don't get their prayers answered. Now there's a reason that you don't get your prayers answered if you don't. And there's a reason that you do get your prayers answered when you do. Somebody has said there's a cause for every effect. So if the effect is answered prayer, you're doing something right. If the effect is unanswered prayer, then you need to ask yourself a very, very, just a very simple question. What are you doing wrong? Now, we tend to blame God sometimes and say, well, God's doing something wrong. God is not doing what he said he would do. <sighs> Let me tell you something. I want you to think about this. You're a human being. You're less than 100 years old. Most of you listening to this are less than a century old. Nobody listening to this is two or 300 years of age. And so you're listening to this radio program thinking you have so much knowledge and education and so much understanding and so much wisdom, and you're comparing yourself to the almighty God who, how old is he? Infinitely old, the ancient of days. They say, I mean, if you want to believe scientists, they say the universe is, is uh, around 13.7 billion years of age. In other words, based on extrapolating from the time that the Big Bang would have occurred based on the, time, the size of the universe and its speed of the expansion going outward, we can extrapolate backwards and figure out the time when the universe was created. So less than 14 billion years, but still billions and billions of years. And if God created everything, Genesis 1-1 tells us he did, then God is at least that old, isn't he? Now, in just one billion years, how much more knowledge does God have than you? And yet the Bible says in, in, um, in the book of Psalms that, his, that he is from everlasting to everlasting. And the same is true of Jesus. In Micah chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, the one born in Bethlehem, his goings forth are from everlasting. That's Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. From everlasting. If you have an NIV, put that thing down. It says his goings forth are from ancient times or something like that because they want to take out the fact that Jesus is everlasting. And, the, you know, the Hebrew word there means forever and is translated many, many, many times as forever and everlasting. But the NIV had this anti-deity complex or something's going on there and they denigrated the deity of Christ by by perverting the actual meaning of that expression in Hebrew. The King James Version has it absolutely correct. His goings forth are from everlasting. Now God has lived for all these hundreds of billions of trillions of eons and you think God is mistaken? You're right and he's wrong? I had uh, one fellow to call me on the phone one time. He may even be listening today. And uh, he said, I prayed about something and, and uh, told God what I needed, and God didn't do it. And he was very angry with God because the Almighty didn't do what he wanted him to do. His exact verbatim quotation that I'm going to give you here on the radio today, his exact statement to me was this, and I quote, he said this, I think God ought to do what I tell him to do, end of quote. Now, if I was God, I wouldn't have done much for him either <laughs> with that attitude. But we come to God in humility. We come to God asking God to help us. He's our master. We are his servant. But what what is the problem when you don't get your prayers answered? What's the answer to unanswered prayer? Are there times when certain prayers that you've prayed for for something you really needed just went unanswered? Do you have a need that has gone unfulfilled? You've got certain needs in your life that just has never come to pass, that have never been fulfilled, and you think, what is the problem? Now, you go talk to your pastor or you talk to a Sunday school teacher or a church lay leader, this is what they'll tell you. Well, you know, God is testing your patience. He's trying your patience. 
or he's testing your faith. Yeah, but how many years and years and years is he going to test me? And, you know, there's a point in time where you kind of run out of time. Let's take you ladies, for example. Let's say you're wanting to have children, and you're asking God to let you have a child. Well, you know, he could test your patience for the next 20 or 30 years, but by that time, your biological clock will have come and gone, or however you express that. It's going to be too late to have children. And so there, there is a certain time element that if God's going to do something, he needs to do it. I know about Sarah. Don't write me a letter and say, yeah, but you know, God let Sarah have a child when she was 90 years old. Yes, I know that. Now, how many other people do you know that was 90 years old when they uh, gave birth to a child? That is a unique example. It's a not just a rare exception. It's a singular and unique example. God allows people to have children when they're of childbearing age. That's one example. But there are some things like that that you got to have. Now, for example, if, you're, if you have absolutely no food and there's no chance of getting it and you say, Lord, I need some food, he can't test your patience too long, uh, right? I don't mean just here in America. Let's say you're on an island on, out there in the South Pacific somewhere and there's nobody around but you. You're like Robinson Crusoe and there's absolutely nothing to eat. Now, in this particular case, you can't go to the grocery store. In fact, you can't even steal money to go buy food with. You're, you're either, either God's going to have to answer you within the next few days, or he might as well forget it. You need food more than you need patience. You need food more than you need God to try your faith. Amen? So there are some things that you need right away. Now, I want to talk to you about how to get your prayers answered using supernatural faith. That's what I want to talk to you about. And this is going to be a short series. I won't finish it today, so you need to listen every time this program's on the air. The Bible says without faith you cannot please God. So, have you tried to build up your faith to please God so he would answer, and yet he failed to answer? Do you lack faith to have all your prayers answered in such a way as to supply your needs? Has everything you've tried failed? I'm talking to a bunch of you out there. Now, today I want to share what you might call a faith secret with my audience that can revolutionize your prayer life, and of course that would revolutionize your entire life, and it would bless you, wouldn't it? It would bless your entire life. Now, last time on the radio program, we went through some scriptures that tells us that we should pray without ceasing. For example, First um, Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. Keep praying. Jesus said in, in uh, Luke 18.1, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Or actually, that's how Luke refers to the parable Jesus is about to give. In Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Not grow faint-hearted. But what difference is it going to make if you keep praying and 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 God never answers your prayer? And then some other person comes along here and they pray for the same thing. By George, they get it within a week. Now, I've seen that happen. I have seen things like that happen to other people, and then I'm asking for the same thing, and I don't get it. And some of you know what I'm talking about. It's happened to you. So I want to share the missing ingredient that affects our prayers. Now, if you've got your Bible handy and you're at home, don't do this if you're driving down the road in your car, but if you're at home and you can turn to this, I'd like for you to go to, to the book of Mark, Mark chapter 11. Now, a number of you know this. It's a very familiar scripture. I'm going to turn to it in my Bible and read it to you. Mark chapter 11. Jesus was with the disciples, and uh, he was a bit hungry, and he saw a fig tree. And so he walked over to the fig tree to eat from it, and of course it didn't have any figs. It had leaves, but it didn't have figs. And Jesus said in front of his disciples, and probably more or less to, to make an illustration here of, of the power of God and the faith of God, he said, no man eat fruit on you hereafter forever. Now, this is Mark chapter 11, uh, verse uh, 14. And it says, and his disciples heard it. Well, the next day, 
verse 20, in the morning as they came by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. It died. Jesus put a curse on it by simply saying, nobody will ever eat fruit off you ever again, and the thing died. Verse 21, Peter, calling to remembrance, said to him, Master, behold, the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. He was astonished. And Jesus answering, answering what Peter said, have, what Peter said, he said, have, Peter was astonished, and listen to verse 22, Jesus answering. Now, this is what I want to point out. What he's about to say here is an answer to Peter's astonishment that all Jesus did was speak to a tree. That's all he did. He spoke to the tree, and the tree obeyed. Jesus said, have faith in God. Now, if you look in the margin of your King James Bible, and I've said for many, 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 many years, you know, true Bible students need to get an expensive Bible that's got a center reference margin. The Bible is the most important book you'll ever own, so get you one with a good center reference margin. I personally use the first edition of the Schofield Reference Bible, or now they're calling it the Schofield Study Bible, and it's got a good center reference margin. I recommend you get a you, certainly, you need to use the King James Version, which is a word-for-word translation. So we, what, if you look in the margin, the actual Greek says, have the faith of God. Now, I was talking to our Greek professor at Ambassador Christian College some time ago, and uh, without looking at the King James or without looking at the margin, just looking at the Greek itself, I said, I want you to give me an ultra-literal translation of verse 22. He said, well, he said this is in the possessive uh, tense, and it actually means not faith in God, but have the faith of God. So, because I think he was looking at a uh, at an interlinear, which, which just said what the King James says and what others say, have faith in God. But the literal translation, ultra-literal, means have the faith of God. Now, if I said have the book of John... I could also say have John's book, have the car of Fred, have Fred's car. You understand what I'm saying here? Well, to have the faith of God is to have God's faith. Now, what kind of faith does God have? Well, verses uh, verses, uh, 23 of chapter 11 and verse 24 tell us the kind of faith God has. It's the kind of faith that is absolute assurance. Jesus said, if a person uses the faith of God, he can tell a mountain to move and to be cast into the sea. The mountain will lift up off the ground and fly through the air and be cast into the sea. If anyone, he said here, whosoever, the second line of verse 23, whosoever shall say to this mountain. So anybody, Jew or Gentile, man or woman, minister or layperson, If they will use the faith of God, they can exercise their faith to perform miracles. Now, God backs it up, but it's still a miracle. And then verse 24 says, Therefore, whatever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive, and you'll get it. That's amazing. God has laid a wonderful and powerful gift at our feet. If we will use the faith of God It's just, nothing will be impossible to us. Well, that's an amazing statement for me to make, isn't it? In Matthew chapter 17, here's what Jesus said. Because of your unbelief, they asked him why they couldn't cast out a demon. He said, because of your unbelief. For truly I say to you, this is Matthew 17, verse 20. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, it starts off small, but you can grow your faith. You shall say to this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. Now, there's one thing I'm going to have to do right now. I'm going to have to get off the air. I'm out of time. So please listen next time. Tell your friends where to listen, and we'll continue this to show you how to get your prayers answered. In the meantime... We've got an interesting article on prayer. It's Lesson 12 of the Prove All Things course. Just say, send me the one. Uh, And it's free, no request for money. It's the one on answered prayer. It's part of our Prove All Things course. Pick up the telephone right now and call me or anytime this week, 704-938-6408. 704-938-6408. 
704-570-1415. Now, if you didn't get a chance to call now, you can call any time this week, 704-938-6415. Until next time, this is Keith Slough. Be sure to listen next time. You've been listening to Dr. Keith Slough from Ambassador Christian College. Join us again next Sunday at the same time for the broadcast of the Keith Slough Commentary on 1140 WRD, 1460 WRKB, and FordBroadcasting.com.